and his first words are, peace be with you. William Sloan Coffin, um, the great prophet of the church, passed away um, 11 years ago. And he passed away during Holy Week, a very fitting time. And he said, 11 years ago, as I see it, the primary religious task, task, job, these days is to try to think straight. You can't think straight with a heart full of fear, for fear seeks safety, not truth. If your heart's a stone, you can't have decent thoughts, either about personal relations or about international ones. A heart full of love, on the other hand, has a limbering effect on the mind. So with peace, there is possibility for love. And when he breathed the Holy Spirit on the people, he breathed the Holy Spirit on them. He let the possibilities be. And because of that, they were eventually able to leave that locked room. I told you last Sunday um, that I was going for the school for ministry, and at the school for ministry, we were going to have Ellen uh, Chari, Chari uh, is going to be one of the speakers. And then I had met her daughter uh, back in, I said 1989, but then we did the math, and it was really uh, 1990 that I had, um, I had met her, uh, her daughter. And uh, I thought, well, I'm going to be all excited about this. You know, I'm excited. I, to Ellen, it might not mean much of anything. But after she gave her first lecture, well, Ellen teaches, well, she just retired, actually. This year is her first year of retirement. Um, she's been teaching at Princeton um, Seminary. And she teaches, um, she was teaching us last week about the Psalms, which was really, really good. I learned a lot about the Psalms. And after her first lecture, I went up to her, and I told her who I was, and, and I said, I, I met your, your daughter at Crop Walk, and I was part of the Plainfield Friends meeting for worship during the, the midweek, and it was, a, it was just a wonderful experience. She is still so close to Duane. She calls him Donald in her articles, but the, the person that, that murdered Anita, Anita was one of her closest friends, and, uh, and she took it on as her role after Duane killed Anita. Brutal murder. She took it upon herself to continue to care for Duane because that's what Anita would have wanted her to do. That's what she felt Jesus had called her to do. And the only way she's been able to do that over all these years, and that was 26 years ago, is because of these words from this gospel reading. Peace be with you. I'm giving you the power to forgive. And if you hold on to it, you can hold on. Go right ahead. You can hold on because then it won't be forgiven. It took two years, she said, before she could really reach Dwayne and say, you know, you murdered someone. He was so, so wrapped up in all the hurt of his own life that he could not see the hurt in anybody else's life. We get like that. I know I do. We can get like that. We can get so wrapped up in what this, how this affected me that we can't see how it's affecting anyone else. And that's been our powerful ministry. The story goes on. But that story is one for, for all of us. What seems like an impossible thing to forgive is possible doesn't take away the pain, doesn't take away the wounds. In fact, the resurrected Jesus isn't without wounds. That's the good news. He comes back resurrected, and he still has wounds. In fact, the symbol for Jesus is the wounds. 
We have been wounded over and over again by people that are closest to us, by words, deeds. We have hurt other people. We don't go through this life without hurting people because we're, that's who we are. We don't mean to hurt other people. We don't set out to make life miserable for people, but that's what happens. And we get wounded. Those wounds don't go away. But what those wounds can do is to give us power, if we let it, power to be more compassionate, to be more loving, to be more understanding. Because we never know what wounds a person is carrying, or what burden a person is carrying. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit, to be able to see, to be able to be patient, to be able to be kind, to be able to seek justice, to be able to, to, be able to connect where somebody's pain is. And one final story, um, Howard Thurman, I had to read this book my first year in seminary called uh, Disciplines of the Spirit. Howard Thurman, an African-American professor at Boston University um, Seminary, which is the United Methodist Seminary, and it's noted to be one of the most um, academic of the seminaries. In fact, I had thought about going to um, Boston University, but I had to do my GREs in order to do that. It's very academic. So here is this very academic person is asked to speak at the Philadelphia Friends Meeting. Now, that's silent worship. You don't speak unless you feel in the body, the worshiping body, feel called to speak. So he had a struggle. Here's somebody that's used to preparing for a, a major speech, a major presentation, had to let that go and trust in the spirit that would, things would happen. So he went to the meeting, and he's sitting there for quite some time, and everyone is sitting there worshiping in silence. And suddenly, in his head, he could see as if it was on a screen. He could see words. And he could see that it was the Sermon on the Mount. One word after another. And that was the message. And as he prepared to stand to give his message about the Sermon on the Mount, someone else got up and gave a message about the Sermon on the Mount. And then he's all set to say something else. And someone else got up and said something else about the Beatitudes. Again, this happened. And again, this happened. There's only a few minutes left. He's been called to, to speak to this group. And he gets up, finally, and he gives a message. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. When a whole group of people sitting and waiting by the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus has breathed on us gets the same message and shares the same message. It takes waiting. It takes patience. And there's times of questioning just like, just like Thomas, questioning Thomas that we may have questions along the way and we may get impatient. But we wait because the power of the Holy Spirit is alive and well here. Thanks be to God. Amen. Okay, I wonder what's next. I wonder what's next. Okay, not looking, let's see. Let's sing. Number 18 on the slide, we're going to sing um, the Day of Resurrection in our red hymnals, number 303. Please stand, the words are up on the screen.
And you may be seated. And Nancy, would you please reach in and pick something out? I'm starting to know what's coming up next, and I don't want to know that. Let us stand for slide number five, which is the call to worship. You just sat down, and now you're standing up again. Now you know why we organize things in the, in the worship service. Not just because they, but we do organize things by up and down, because our bodies speak. When doors were shut and the world was kept out, When the church gathers and the world waits outside, is that the end of the call to worship? Okay, you may be seated. All right. Yeah, just pick one. All right. Well, as we come to the time of prayers of the people, slide number 12. Slide number 12 goes to 12, 1, 12, 2, 12, 3, and 12, 4. What great and good thing happened for you today, this week? What good thing happened? Any good things? Okay, if nobody's going to say anything, I will. I just told Kevin, I said, this is something silly, but to me, I don't know, I guess it was a huge accomplishment. Yesterday when the weather was nice, I felt okay and really good with my fibromyalgia that I have and some other digestive health problems I'm having. Yesterday I just had a really good day. I got to be out in the sun all day working in the yard, and that was a huge joy for me. Awesome. Generous God. Yesterday, when I was visiting uh, Larry at Ravenwood, I got to meet one of the aides there. His, his name is Ben, and he's from Liberia. And so I bet you Larry and Ben are going to have some lively conversations about the United Methodist Church in Liberia. And I met, um, Jim and I have met the president of Liberia. She's a United Methodist, and she was at, oh, Marilyn probably remembers this. She was at our annual conference um, a number of years ago now. So generous God, pour out your love. I don't know how many of you saw Anything Goes at Union. Um, the kids won again for best production and best overall ensemble. Plus we had four top performers, Cassidy Downs, who used to go to church here, Anna Garwood, um, Wesley Hansen, and Jordan Smits. Great, generous God. Any other good things? This week. All right, prayers of concern or prayers of, you know, folks that are sick or needing help. Um, Leland Jones is at the hospice house in um, Waterloo now, and he'll be staying there. Had a great visit with him. So, generous God. Dale and Bev Santman, we would like to have continued prayers for our son, Kim, who is in his second stem cell transplant for his cancer of the bone marrow. He's uh, at the lowest point right now mm -hmm. and having some problems with heart along with it. So we ask for your prayers. Generous God. Any others? Any other concerns this week? Well, let's be in a time of silence as we ponder the prayers of our hearts. Loving God, enfold us in your embrace with the violence of the world when the violence of the world shakes us to our core. Slow our heart rate, calm our breathing. And despair might be too great, or the hate or the pain too much. 
Remind us that you are with us every breath of the way, just as you were present in that room with the disciples. You are present right now with us. Help us to meditate on the words of Scripture that bring us hope and healing. Help us to open our minds to new ways of thinking and new solutions and in our hearts to embrace those who are hurting and in need of aid. Loving one, breathe into us your love and overflow our hearts to love the world, we pray. Amen. Well, we have two things left. I'll pick one of them. And... Um, that would be number slide number 14 and slide number 14.1 and 14.2. So let us now offer our gifts and tithes and our offerings. Yes. Oh, come on up. Come on up for a stewardship joke while before the offertory begins. The wife was surprised when her husband came in all red-faced and sweaty and out of breath. She goes, weren't you at the stewardship meeting at church? He goes, yeah, I said, but they gave us an idea of how we can shift some of our resources to make sure we fulfill our pledge. He goes, so instead of riding the bus home, I ran home after the bus and saved a dollar fifty. She goes, that was really dumb. Why didn't you follow a taxi home and save $10? <laughs> Good stewardship. Good. So let us offer our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings this morning for Christ's work here in this church and around the world. We have one thing left, and that is the time for children. This is where children belong, and I do not see any little children here. I just see a lot of big children. So let us still sing where children belong. You can remain, obviously, sitting. So. Okay, all those that would like to be like a child at heart, who feel like a child at heart, how would you like to come on up 
pick out a joke and read it from the, anybody want to do that? Anybody want to have fun doing that? Any, like no one, no one wants to have fun reading a joke? I mean, I no guarantee how corny they are, you know, like they are, they are, okay, just pick a one and, yeah, go. <laughs> Okay, why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Would you like another one? No. Anybody else want to do this? You don't like this one? You want to get another one? She doesn't like that one. <laughs> you want one? Knock knock. knock, knock. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> well yeah, I, I realize that now. Okay, knock, knock. Pizza. Pizza, really nice guy. Pizza, nice guy. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Why did the boy bring a ladder to, to school? He wanted to go to high school. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have time for one more. Ah, oh, that one looks like he wants to come and get one. Isn't that funny? We've, we've done everything that we normally do, and we, look how much time we have to just read. What? No. <laughs> they would be even worse than this if I had written them. <laughs> oh, when you read it, you'll, your choice of children will just be for denial. Oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and here I thought I had it all down. <laughs> you know, teachers are big hands, so that's why I'm here. Always told my kids I had to be entertaining. In the Bulletin of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Catholic Church, Palm Coast, Florida, we have a special holiday bingo dinner on Monday evening, December 30th. You will be given two bingo packs, which cover all games, in your choice of children or roast beef for dinner. During the time for children, no less. <laughs> well, this has been fun. I can't think of a better way to say Christ is risen, risen indeed, than to say worship is fun, that we come together. And, you know, I really, what I really, really loved about Howard Thurman's story was how together the message was written. You know, no one, no one prepared for that. I mean, no one was home saying, oh, on that day, that meeting for worship, we're all going to speak about um, the Sermon on the Mount. They didn't plan that. All I knew is that they were all coming to worship God, that they all were coming to, and they had to be open, they had to be free, they had to be to receive a message. And what great news that is. You don't have to go and be some great scholar or be all prepared. The only thing you need to be prepared for is to receive God's love and God's grace. And when we're all ready to receive God's grace, what power that is to be all connected. So thanks be to God. Amen. And the service is ended.